William Byron dominates, leading 66 of 90 laps to get the win today, solidifying that he is the current championship favorite, while his teammate Chase Elliott has a very disappointing day, putting him in a must-win situation heading to Daytona. Let's talk about NASCAR and Watkins Glen. Hello everybody, welcome to Dirty Air. I'm your host Alex Lambert and let's talk about NASCAR up in Watkins Glen, New York where William Byron is able to get his fifth win of the NASCAR season. That is the most wins that he's received in a single NASCAR season. But guys like Chase Elliott, Michael McDowell, Daniel Suarez were all expected to have good days. They had disastrous days and we'll obviously talk about the playoff bubble as it continues to heat up with now one race remaining and that race is Daytona and without any farther ado let's go ahead and get on into NASCAR at Watkins Glen. The man of the hour William Byron we have to talk about him we have to talk about how this is probably one of his most impressive wins of his career definitely one of the most impressive wins this season and let's talk about it because William Byron with one race remaining now to the playoffs two races today was able to finally get a win in the summer stretch. Remember, it was five races ago at Atlanta where he was able to get a win, but that was a rain-shortened win at a super speedway type race. I think this, today, winning William Byron is a big statement for the rest of the garage, showing that this 24 team is a force to be reckoned with and that they are championship contenders 100%. Championship favorites. I mean, really, five wins this season. Look at how they've gotten those wins. Uh, a couple of those coming on over, three of those coming on overtime restarts, one of those coming at Atlanta where they had to use strategy to get the win, and then one of those coming today where they dominated at a road course. You look at the variety of tracks he's won at, one at Phoenix earlier this season, one at Las Vegas where he led over 100 laps at Las Vegas. Uh, a big, crazy wreck fest happened at the end of Darlington earlier this year where he was able to sneak up there and get the win. Obviously, Atlanta was one of those rain races where everybody was trying to find strategy to get to the front to win the race. William Byron, Rudy Fugel, one of the best pairings in the garage area right now. We're able to find a way to capitalize on that, get up front, get the win, and then today dominating, leading 66 of those 90 laps at a road course race. Variety of different racetracks, that's a good sign going into the playoffs as there are a lot of variety of different racetracks when you go to the playoffs, road courses, super speedways, mile and a half, short tracks. When you get into the playoffs and the way that they've won each race is so different and I think all that means is that they're a force to be reckoned with. William Byron, easily the championship favorite. This could be his year to win a championship. It would not surprise me whatsoever the way that they've been running. They have speed every week. They had speed last week. Just had to start in the back. That's why they were unable to get up there and fight for the win with only one caution at the very beginning of the race. William Byron's fast week in, week out. Like I said, there's, they, they weren't in a little summer slump, which we see every year. And, and listening to William Byron talk, he talks about how it's really the racetracks they go to. They fixed that a little bit. They're still, you know, they didn't win a whole lot of races in the summer stretch. They were able to get that Atlanta win on strategy. But then today really showed that they can win in the summer and win going into the playoffs, which is coming up in just now one week. So a lot of momentum for the 24 team. They're definitely the favorites going into it. But let's go ahead and go through the entire top 10 because we had a few storylines building today. Only one caution again today. This one was in the middle of the race, but once again, we only had one caution last week, one caution today. And let's go ahead and talk about it. Denny Hamlin ended up finishing in the second position, also showing a lot of speed going into the playoffs. He's in the top five, top 10 most weeks, was finishing running up front last week, was running up front the week before that, won at Pocono. Denny Hamlin also showing a lot of speed right now late in the season could this be his year to say something about William Byron winning that championship? Christopher Bell finally coming back up and getting a third place finish. The speed's been there for the 20 car. At least most weeks, the speed has been there for the 20 car. It's just the mistakes, the inconsistency, pit road trouble, driver trouble. Everything has gone wrong for Christopher Bell the last few weeks into the summer, into the later stages of the season. Hopefully, he can turn that around this weekend or going into the NASCAR playoffs at Darlington in a couple of weeks. Christopher Bell, solid third place finish. You heard his late race interview, and uh, he says that he's excited about the playoffs. Just glad that he's finally starting to put the races together, stop making mistakes, and you're going to see that payoff if he's able to continue to do that in the playoffs. A.J. Allmendinger, one of the ro those road course ringers, I'm surprised. I can't believe I'm saying I'm surprised, but as slow as that 16 Kali car has been on road courses all season long, as bad as they were a week ago, I'm surprised he was top five today. Not driver-wise, just car-wise. But it's good to see A.J. Allmendinger back up front at the road courses. That feels very usual to see that 16 car of A.J. Allmendinger up there in the top five, potentially competing for wins at the road course races. So glad to see him 
back up front at these types of tracks. Ty Gibbs, another top five finish today. I believe that's his second top five finish of his career. Solid day today. Was trying to be respectful for everybody. Had a dramatic day on Saturday after the Xfinity race. Uh, I think he was really fast. I don't know if he was the fastest car on track, but he looked to be really fast. Looked like he was trying to pass Hamlin at one point, get by Larson at one point, but was just trying to be respectful. Got roughed up a little bit. Just trying to learn in his rookie season. I think he's going to start to get a little more aggressive as we get into next season and then farther down the road for Gibbs to try to gain those spots back and gain some respect from the other drivers. Martin Trex Jr., solid sixth place finish. Another one of those drivers that's always consistently in the top. Unless something really bad goes wrong, Martin Trex Jr. is usually up front. In fact, this is probably one of his worst days recently, finishing in the sixth position uh, and didn't show winning speed all day long. But Truex, another one of those drivers that's definitely a championship threat with three wins this season. Fast at all kinds of racetracks, all variety of tracks. Once again, only one more race till the playoffs begin. Chris Buescher, another solid run, finishing the top seven today. Uh, Tyler Riddick actually was able to finish in the eighth position. A little bit disappointing the last couple of weeks from Riddick. I thought he was going to show a whole lot more speed than he did. I thought he was going to go out there and maybe win one of these two races. We saw how he was super fast at the road courses last year. One at Road America, one at the Indianapolis road course. And then earlier this season was able to win in the Toyota was able to win in Austin, Texas at Coda. Just hasn't really showed that much speed at the road courses. The last two road courses, not winning speed at least. Uh, so a little bit disappointed in Tyler Riddick. Eighth place is definitely not where I expected him to finish uh, at, at a road course race this season. Ryan Blaney, a solid top 10 day. And then Joey Logano as well. Two Penske Fords finishing 1, 2, 9, and 10. Decent day for Ryan Blaney and Joey Logano to round out the top 10. Let's talk about a few guys that had really bad days, disastrous days. And you have to talk about Chase Elliott. Chase Elliott came into this race knowing that he has to win either this week or next week at Daytona to get into the playoffs. And nobody wants to put all their money at Daytona. Nobody wants to bet or expect to win at Daytona because that is so random. It's such a wild card. You never know what can happen there. Sure, you can do everything right and still end up not winning the race or still end up wrecked at Daytona. Well, Chase Elliott, throughout the first 25 races of the season, he is now in that situation. After today, a massive miscalculation by Alan Gustafson. have a separate fuel tank that uh, that holds fuel. It's usually uh, about a couple of laps or so at most racetracks. Alan Gustafson thought it was going to be three laps at Watkins Glen, which is seven and a half miles. That was a major miscalculation. He told his driver he had three laps left on fuel at Chase Elliott did not. That was actually the only caution of the day was Chase Elliott running out of fuel on the racetrack. That is a, I'm going to go ahead and say it, that's a pretty embarrassing mistake to make. I did not expect that from Alan Gustafson, a talented crew chief, a very experienced crew chief. I did not expect that kind of mistake uh, in this type of clutch, high-pressure situation for Chase Elliott. He had a shot to win today, at least could have went up there and gave his teammate a run for his money but ran out of fuel early in the race. That's exceptionally disappointing, and that's a mistake you cannot make uh, uh, any time of the season if you want to make the NASCAR playoffs. Super disappointing that Chase Elliott, I think he's going to miss the playoffs now. He has, to, he has next week at Daytona. That is a chance for him to win, but that's a wild card. That is truly a wild card race, and you're putting all your money in Daytona. That usually doesn't go well for most drivers when that is the case. Michael McDowell was really fast early on, actually was able to get by Denny Hamlin at the start of the race, lead the beginning portion of the race. I talked about how Byron led 66 of the laps. Well, before that, it was Michael McDowell leading until he had a lot of mistakes. The, good, the only good thing about all the mistakes McDowell made today is it was in one race, and he's already guaranteed in the playoffs now. But McDowell had a mistake full day. Comes down pit road early on in the race, drives through five pit boxes, you can see it here. You're only allowed to drive through four, one, two, three, four, five. One of those pit, pit boxes was vacant, so I think he thought that that was a freebie. You could drive through it. Uh, no, you cannot do that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know if he didn't know that rule or just got caught off guard that there wasn't a pit box there. Not entirely sure, but that is a rule that definitely needs to be reinstated by the team, explaining that you cannot go through five pit boxes, whether there's a team in there or not. That really caused Michael McDowell, put him back in track, uh, Put him back in traffic where track position was key today. Uh, really took away his chances to win. Then, of course, later on in the race, got caught or got caught with a man coming over the wall too soon. That's on the pit crew. And then, finally, had a, a, a manufacturing issue, a malfunction underneath the hood of the race car, an engine issue, and that completely ended Michael McDowell's day. So it was a mistake full day. The engineer, something went wrong with the race car. The pit crews made a mistake, and the driver made a mistake all in one day. It's good to get those mistakes out of the way now instead of in the playoffs, I guess, but 
of a, a mistake full day for Michael McNow, disappointing that he wasn't able to get his second win in a row and second win of the NASCAR season. Kyle Larson was also one of those drivers. I talked about how he was not in the top 10. He actually got a pit road speeding penalty exiting on pit road as well. It's a downhill slope leaving uh, pit road at Watkins Glen. Might have caught a little bit of speed there. If you barely go over, it still counts as a penalty. Uh, Kyle Larson, not the best day today for him with that penalty on the final pit stop. And of course, let's talk about the NASCAR playoff grid. One race to go, a last chance race for everybody that's not in yellow. Everybody in yellow is guaranteed in. Now you see two new guys in yellow this week from last week. Those aren't two new winners. That is Brad Keselowski and Kevin Harvick. They can no longer be kicked out of the NASCAR playoffs. They have enough points to where Bubba Wallace can't catch them, in, who's in 16th, and they have enough points to where they are in. There's only one race left. No winners can knock them out. Brad Keselowski, Kevin Harvick, they've been fast all season. They were in by like 140, 150 points for the majority of the, of the summer stretch. So it's good to see both of those guys guaranteed in. But this leaves. You look at the top 15 here. They're all safe. They're in, ready. They're looking forward to the NASCAR playoffs. Bubba Wallace he needs to go into Daytona and say, okay, I just need to survive this race. I need to get through this race and try not to get into a wreck, especially early on. If I can get stage points, get stage points. Uh, those can really pay off. Try to do whatever he can to stay above Daniel Suarez and Ty Gibbs. He has a decent cushion. 32 points is a decent cushion in this race. At the end of that, Bubba Wallace, after the stage cautions, you might want to try to go for the win. Don't wreck but you might want to try to be up front and get the win because it's such a wild card. Everybody else below him, Ty Gibbs, Daniel Suarez, A.J. Almanier, Alex Bowman, Chase Elliott below the grid, uh, Justin Haley, many drivers below him need to win at Daytona to get in. You win, that makes all your problems go away. That puts you in that 16th spot guaranteed in the playoffs. That's what all those drivers need. That's why it's a last chance race. Daytona, it could get crazy and Bubba Wallace just needs to try to keep that points cushion. You don't want to lose the points cushion and lose it on points, but Bubba Wallace is really on the hot seat right now. He has won at Talladega before, has finished second at Daytona a lot, but Bubba Wallace is really in the hot seat right now. But everybody else, everybody in red, you have even if it's not mathematically uh, impossible for you to make the playoffs like Ty Gibbs, like Daniel Suarez, you have to go into that race thinking, I need to win at Daytona, and everybody on the entire list that has not won a race yet will be looking to win at Daytona and put themselves in the NASCAR playoffs. So that's it. That's really all there is to talk about following NASCAR at Watkins Glen. It was an interesting race, a somewhat strategic race, but William Byron at the end of the day was able to get his fifth win of the season. Of course, like and subscribe if you like the video. Obviously, I'll do a race review video following Daytona primetime next Saturday night. That should be exciting. Of course, share the video if you like it. And of course, about Kyle Busch, unfortunately finishing outside the top 10 again. Let's get rowdy.